We're in Oldham. Or to be specific, we're in Durker Durker. Durka Durka. Team America World Police Durka Durka? Durka Durka, I better touch out. So good morning everybody from sunny Oldham. Here's my face. We're on uh just off Durker Street, Durka Durka. And up ahead, I'll tell you the story, for those of you who don't know, there's been a major incident, a major police incident. Uh, there was a big mill, a big old uh, Victorian mill, burnt down, big, big fire. It took four days to put the fire out, just to give you an idea of the ferocity and the size of the fire. And they thought there's no dead bodies, there's no, no one's died in this fire. So they sent in the firemen and the demolition crew to, you know, start clearing up the smoldering remains and they found a body. And then they found more bodies. I think they're up to four bodies now. And they're worried in case there's loads more. And they are Vietnamese nationals. Vietnamese bodies, poor things. And then there's been talk that, you know, people asking, speculating, alleging, was it a cannabis farm? Was it faulty electrics and just bad stuff going on? I don't know, but anyway, enough of me. Let's uh, let's concentrate on the scene. So it's still a big police response, and you can see they've put giant barriers up to stop people looking. And uh, yeah, it's a big sight. My friend uh, with the channel Fritz Media, if you go on his Instagram, Pink B Photography, Pink B Photography, you'll see all the you'll see the aerial shots, the drone shots of the site. So. I don't know what it's... Are they saying that the public are so... I don't know, rude? That they come to gop at... I don't know, seems a bit strange. Hey, okay. Sorry? Oh, one sec, there's a car coming, one sec. Hiya. All good, it's all good, thanks. Thanks, man. So yeah, copper was friendly enough, but you can see here. Hope I don't get shouted at. Yeah, the perimeter plastic sheeting they've put on for privacy is about five meters tall. He's gonna knock over that sign. He's gonna knock over the sign. Knock it, knock it. Nah, he saw it in time. Or did he? Just to show you the, uh, look at this, have you ever seen fire and rescue dump trucks? you have now and just to let you know we're about a week or eight days eight days into them finding the bodies and it's still a massive incident well they call it a major incident and uh, I guess they're worried that they're gonna find more and more bodies now I could do a big speech about the state of Britishness and anonymity and how can four people die in a fire and then for days, nobody knows, nobody misses them, nobody cares. I think the answer is they were probably hiding. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, what's that? Oh yeah, don't go under there, yeah, of course. Of course, no worries. No worries, cheers, man. Yeah, um, oh, where was I? What was I saying? Yeah, smuggled people paying off their smugglers fees, human traffickers. They might be some of the scummiest people on earth, aren't they? The people in the dinghies that, you know, take overloaded dinghies over from Tunisia to try to get to Italy or Greece or wherever, Morocco or Libya. And they just take $10,000 from these desperate families. Now, I want to indict families bringing children over the sea in dinghies. Like, come on, man. I know the situation in Lebanon or Libya or Syria or Algeria is maybe poor. 
but it never justifies putting your three-year-old kid in a rubber dinghy. And anyway, I'm ranting about something completely different. These poor Vietnamese gentlemen who have passed away, four so far, could be more, could be 10. You know, when many, many people die in a fire, it is automatically a major incident. And now what the police, what the police need to try and find out is um, were the people forced to stay down there? Were they murdered in an arson, in a, in a deliberate arson where they were chained, unable to escape? Because they were in the basement, the fire the alleged cannabis plantation was in the basement and did they get a chance to escape were they murdered we don't know the police don't know which is why they're investigating okay we're coming up the side street um, i've shown you some of the stuff down there i just want to have a look from this side of the road obviously we need total coverage and uh you heard my speech about how the police really don't want freelancers taking photographs here, but I don't think it's fair that uh, the mainstream media are able to do everything that they're doing, and then other people are not. Here's the scene. Oh, look, the gate's opening. You can see some inflatable tents down there. Anyone know what those are? What does that important sign say? There's people here from Her Majesty's Coroner's Office. And uh, you don't need to wonder why. It's because of the four bodies so far. And uh, I wonder if they're going to find many more. Massive condolences to the families of the four Chinese men. I, I assume it's four men. Um, if anyone knows anything about Vietnamese women working in the, you know, that sort of thing, let me know. Just to show you here, you know, this is what I've just been filming. Directly opposite on Mile Street, you've got Mile Street Salvage and Parts. You've got R&D Motors. It's a busy place. Look at all the cars parked here. Look at all the cars parked here. This is a very busy place. So. Four people died in a alleged cannabis plantation without anyone being able to know about it. And that is the biggest weirdness, isn't it? It's so weird. And obviously the smugglers, whoever was running the, the alleged cannabis farm, they knew. They knew about the people in there and they didn't say anything. And that is scummy as hell. You can see the basement where the fatalities took place down there. It's a massive sight. It's like uh, looking into that giant hole with a man of fluorescent there. Can you see the hole? I mean, I've been to ground zero a couple of years after that took place. Now, of course, four is not Four, four deaths is not 3,000, so I'm not making comparisons. I'm just saying I'm getting a, a similar vibe, you know, the giant fireman police response vibe into a giant hole in the ground. That's all I'm saying. Note, obviously here it's at about, oh, I don't know. It's not high. You can see it's, it's, it's not high, the barrier here, but next to the hole, you know, the hole, over there, look, they've put up loads of scaffolding and big tarpaulins. They've made big efforts to prevent anyone looking into the hole. So once again, if you want to see into the hole, I advise you to go to Pink Bee Photography on Instagram, and uh, you'll see some very nice drone shots of this entire site, which of course is in the public interest, and we are the public. Okay, we're here on Bower Street, Bower Street. And uh, there is a shot I want, ladies and gentlemen. A shot I really want. And I'm gonna have to go under the yellow do not cross. The way I'm legally gonna cover my ass is to say this isn't a blue and white police do not cross. I want to take a shot from there 
into the hole but I don't want to get screamed at or have people think I'm a scumbag uh, is it worth it? No, it's not worth it. Those individuals there would shout at me because that's the police incident command, as you can see on top. Incident command. And you don't want commanders screaming at you. Let's have a look at the cool helmet in the fire truck. Behind me, sergeant in the car. He, uh, he didn't see me. He, he saw me go around the corner. He, he assumed I'd jumped over the police line, do not cross. But I hadn't. I'm a good boy. But he's been very friendly towards me off camera as well quick chat. I think, you know, there was a statement released by Greater Manchester Police. No, I don't think. I know because I saw it. There was, there was a statement released and they said, uh, could photographers and press not take pictures, not stand on step ladders, not use big powerful lenses and directional microphones? And it was a request. Of course, the police have no power to order free human beings on public land, what they're allowed to look at, what photons are allowed to enter their devices or not. So they, they politely requested, but I believe this scene and the story are very much in the public interest, of course. Mainstream news has been covering it. You'll see all this on the BBC, ITV, Sky News. They're all over it. They're all over it like white on rice, yeah? But when the freelancers turn up, then the egos come out, don't they? It's like, ooh. If you, if you know a video of mine from many years ago called Car Crash Cop Argument, I almost got arrested for filming a scene when directly across the road there was a, a major news crew filming the same scene. Yet they came to the man with a small camera, of course. So how do I feel on this scene? It feels pretty shitty, if I'm honest. You know, what does that say about us? You know, we're not even in the middle of nowhere. We're five minute walk from Durka 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 um, tram stop we're here in Oldham that multiple people can die and nobody knows about it for days and it's uh, a demolition crew or a fireman stumbles across bodies a lot of questions being raised here and nobody has the answers right now this is Charlie Veach from Bismarck House Mill and Durka region of Oldham. Thanks for watching.